plant imbalance. There's that whole pronation, supination aspect. So important. Obviously, the arch of the foot, it feels good to work there, but um, getting a person in sideline like this and using a soft fist, especially a forearm, works just great. Related to that, also, as I work up behind posterior to the medial malleolus here, that's going to be all those muscles that are underneath the Achilles, that tibialis posterior, flexor hallucius, uh, flexor digitorum. Um, I will use a soft fist to glide and work my way all the way up. Um, but during so, if I'm going to include some joint movement, I can just grab literally the arch of the foot and move it back and forth as I'm compressing and gliding. Uh, more specifically, um, I can just grab that big toe. If the person is uh, very ticklish, then I have to be cautious of this. So, but grabbing a hold of the whole big toe and then moving that back and forth, particularly into extension, moving the big toe back and forth from flexion to extension, and I grab with as much as I possibly can, usually these three fingers. Grab the whole big toe, just a little squeeze, and then move it back and forth, flexion, extension, flexion, extension. During which I can be applying compression and gliding strokes to the arch of the foot, and especially up behind the Achilles. If I can be applying that motion while gliding here, that flexor hallucius longus, a really important big toe muscle, it goes all the way up here from the tibia, down past that medial malleolus, through between those sesamoid bones down into the big toe. So that gives you a better angle. If I'm holding and hugging that big toe, moving it back and forth while I work along the arch and up past that medial malleolus into the calf muscles, I'm going to really help free that up. So then when they're supine, I'm going to walk around again. Um, one of the more important things I can think about here is the subtalar joint and how the, and the ankle joint proper, where the talus articulates with the tibia and the fibula. All that's necessary here is to just make sure you are applying compression in the right place. This, my thumb in this orientation, and this is the lateral side of the foot, so I'd be standing on this side of the table. My thumb, I feel, is below the lateral malleolus. My index finger is below the medial malleolus. You will not miss those big bony landmarks. You will feel those. Make sure on either side of those, and then this hand cups the calcaneus. My orientation would look more like this. And all I'm gonna do is pull a little bit on the calcaneus, creating a little tension on the calcaneus, with a little bit of compression on the talus. Not doing anything like a chiropractor, nothing aggressive, just a little bit of a coordination, uh, coordinated pull of that calcaneus with a compression of the talus, just rocking that ankle back and forth from plantar flexion, from plantar flexion to dorsiflexion, plantar flexion to dorsiflexion. Again, landmarks, your hand will slot right there. You should feel like you're bumping right against the lateral malleolus and the medial malleolus. Squeeze. This hand comes around on the other side. Little pull and then little push. So pull, pull, push. Do not go to end range. It's more about just a mild, um, rhythmic, passive joint movement. It should feel good. I'm not looking for a pop. I do not move it into any kind of grind. I do not push it past any end range. I made that clear, right? <laughs> so that gives you some general angles to play with. Move the client around. If you have to do prone and supine, if they're supine, turn the whole leg out into external rotation so you can get to the arch of the foot better. When they're prone, same thing. You know, move their whole leg over to the edge of the table so you can get a better angle on the arch. Uh, reach and grab the front of the foot 
move the whole foot back and forth. Grab either side and just move those metatarsals back and forth and visualize this. Visualize that idea of how the tarsals all translate and uh, articulate and that we have that subtalar joint, sure. But let's think also about cuboid and those cuneiforms in the vicular. All right, so that's the big, uh, the big blah and uh, talk over all the anatomy and stuff. The next videos will be a little bit shorter and they're gonna be more about how I have helped myself as well as shown clients to do some movements um, usually standing in gravity, almost all of these are going to be standing in gravity, and all these movements help reinforce a healthy gait cycle. One leg typically is going to be standing and stabilizing, so helping reinforce balance, and the other leg will be swinging and moving to help reinforce um, the uh, efficient movement and flexibility as well as stability. But the healthy movements of the big toe, arch of the foot, ankle, and hip. So, we'll see you then.